In this problem, we are given an inverse demand curve for paper, P equals 200 minus Q. The private marginal cost for a paper producer is marginal cost with a P sub superscript there, 80 plus Q. And there is a negative externality here. So the marginal external cost of pollution from paper production is this marginal cost E equal to Q. The first question is, what is the unregulated competitive equilibrium? That is, if we don't take into account the marginal external cost, what would the equilibrium be? Well, it's a competitive world, so equilibrium is going to be equal to where uh, marginal cost equals P. So we'll have 80 plus Q equals 200 minus Q, or 2Q equals 120, Q equals 60. So that's going to be the equilibrium quantity. And of course, we can find the price, which is then 200 minus 60 equals to 140. So in the in a diagram over here, we can uh, we can just draw that in if we want to. So what we just found here was the equilibrium here where the marginal private cost intersects the demand curve. So if I went down here, you can see that quantity is going to be 60 and the price will be 140. Okay, but in this example, or in this uh, question, we did not take into account the marginal external cost. But for a social optimum, we would have to take that into account. So the way we find a social optimum is to include both the private cost and the marginal uh, cost that is external. Of course, those two things together will be the marginal cost for a society. And we're going to set that equal to P. So if I do, if I put these things together here, we have the marginal cost for private, 80 plus Q. The external cost, the marginal external cost is Q, and P is still 200 minus Q. Collecting all those terms, we have 3Q equals 120, Q is equal to 40, and the market price would then be equal to 200 minus 40 equals 160. Again, we can go and find that pr uh, point in our diagram. So here's the marginal social cost equal to the demand curve. We see that uh, our quantity is going to be 40 now, and our price is going to be 160. All right, so that's a socially optimal outcome. The question next is how can we get to that outcome? That is, what could the government do to convince the firm to actually reduce its production from 60 to 40 uh, so that uh, we will not have uh, too much produced? All right, so in order to do that, we have to find what's called the Pigouvian tax or the tax that would bring the marginal private cost equal to the uh, marginal social cost at the socially optimal quantity. Okay, so again, we're looking for a specific tax, T, that would result in the private firms choosing to produce the socially optimal output level. So uh, you can see, as we said before, that at that point, we want the firm to produce 40 units of output. And you can see what we want then is for the marginal private cost with a tax that should be equal to the marginal social cost at the socially optimal outcome. All right, so if I just write that down, so for with a tax, this is a specific tax, so the marginal private cost is going to be equal to 1 plus T times Q. And of course, the marginal social cost uh, is equal to, uh, well, it was equal to 80 plus Q plus Q. So basically, we have here that uh, 1 plus TQ equals 2Q. 
or 1 plus t equals 2. And we see that the tax would have to be equal to 1. So this will be the specific tax that would help us find the, or help us move the private equilibrium to the socially optimal equilibrium. Another way we could have done that is to uh, take the marginal cost with a tax and have it equal to the demand curve at an output level of 40. So if I did that, just for fun, we would then get, uh, you know, 1 plus TQ plus Q equals 120. Or if we plug all these together, 2 plus T times Q equals 120. But we have to have that true at the socially optimal output level. So Q is going to be equal to 40. So we have 2 plus T times 40 equals 120. 2 plus T equals 320 divided by 40. T equals 1. So once again, we get the socially the optimal outcome if we have a specific tax equal to 1. Thank you.